Chapter 1. What is Evolution? A curious aspect of the theory of evolution is that everybody thinks he understands it. Jacques Monod If anything is true about nature, it is that plants and animals seem intricately and almost perfectly designed for living their lives. Squids and flatfish change color and pattern to blend in with their surroundings, becoming invisible to predator and prey. Bats have radar to home in on insects at night. Hummingbirds, which can hover in place and change position in an instant, are far more agile than any human helicopter, and have long tongues to sip nectar lying deep within flowers. And the flowers they visit also appear designed to use hummingbirds as sex aids. For while the hummingbird is busy sipping nectar, the flower attaches pollen to its bill, enabling it to fertilize the next flower that the bird visits. Nature resembles a well-oiled machine with every species an intricate cog or gear. What does all this seem to imply? A master mechanic, of course. This conclusion was most famously expressed by the 18th century English philosopher William Paley. If we came across a watch lying on the ground, he said, we would certainly recognize it as the work of a watchmaker. Likewise, the existence of well-adapted organisms and their intricate features surely implied a conscious, celestial designer. God. Let's look at Paley's argument, one of the most famous in the history of philosophy. When we come to inspect the watch, we perceive that its several parts are framed and put together for a purpose, e.g. that they are so formed and adjusted as to produce motion, and that motion so regulated as to point out the hour of the day, that if the different parts had been differently shaped from what they are, if a different size from what they are, or placed after any other manner, or in any other order than that in which they are placed, either no motion at all would have been carried on in the machine, or none which would have answered the use that is now served by it. Every indication of contrivance, every manifestation of design which existed in the watch, exists in the works of nature, with the difference on the side of nature, of being greater and more, and that in a degree which exceeds all computation. The argument Paley put forward so eloquently was both commonsensical and ancient. When he and his fellow natural theologians described plants and animals, they believed that they were cataloging the grandeur and ingenuity of God manifested in his well-designed creatures. Darwin had his own answer to the conundrum of design. A keen naturalist, who originally studied to be a minister at Cambridge University, where, ironically, he occupied Paley's former rooms, Darwin well knew the seductive power of arguments like Paley's. The more one learns about plants and animals, the more one marvels at how well their designs fit their ways of life. What could be more natural than inferring that this fit reflects conscious design? Yet Darwin looked beyond the obvious, suggesting and supporting with copious evidence two ideas that forever dispelled the idea of deliberate design. Those ideas were evolution and natural selection. He was not the first to think of evolution. Several before him, including his own grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, floated the idea that life had evolved. But Darwin was the first to use data from nature to convince people that evolution was true. And his idea of natural selection was truly novel. It testifies to his genius that the concept of natural theology, accepted by most educated Westerners before 1859, was vanquished within only a few years by a single 500-page book. On the origin of species, turned the mysteries of life's diversity from mythology into genuine science. So what is Darwinism? This simple and profoundly beautiful theory the theory of evolution by natural selection, has been so often misunderstood, and even on occasion maliciously misstated, that it is worth pausing for a moment to set out its essential points and claims. We'll be coming back to these repeatedly as we consider the evidence for each.
In essence, the modern theory of evolution is easy to grasp. It can be summarized in a single, albeit slightly long, sentence. Life on Earth evolved gradually, beginning with one primitive species, perhaps a self-replicating molecule that lived more than 3.5 billion years ago. It then branched out over time, throwing off many new and diverse species. And the mechanism for most, but not all, of evolutionary change is natural selection. When you break that statement down, you find that it really consists of six components. Evolution, gradualism, speciation, common ancestry, natural selection, and non-selective mechanisms of evolutionary change. Let's examine what each of these parts means. The first is the idea of evolution itself. This simply means that a species undergoes genetic change over time.